Hi, I'm Brian, Service Manager at Whole Latte Love, and today we're going to talk about changing out your group gasket and shower screen on an E61 group head. You want to do a little cleaning in behind there maybe too? Exactly. All right. Um, now, first thing I'll mention is that we do have another video going through taking apart the rest of the E61 group head. I keep this separate just because there's something I wanted to point out as far as what it takes to change out these components. Mm -hmm. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the machine on its side. It's going to be easier for the camera to see what's going on here. Uh, typically, you can work on this with the machine as is, um, mm -hmm. but so this is just going to be a little bit different view for you. Um, step one, make sure that your machine is off, unplugged, reservoir is out of the machine, plumbing's disconnected, uh, or at least shut off, uh, and just don't want to work on a hot group head, so let it cool <laughs> off first. Sure. So I got my to towel down here so I don't scratch up any of my side panels that would usually be on there. Lean her right on her side. It's a slow rock. This is nice because it's got this uh, beveled edge here so it just kind of pivots right over. Oh, you like that. It's fancy, right? So here's what most people will say. Just grab here and yank out. Now this is where my issue is with frequently doing the maintenance here. First things first, I like to use either a towel or I've wrapped my screwdriver in electrical tape. That way I'm just not gouging up the edge of the group head here. Mm -hmm. So the way to get these out is to take the slotted driver and meet it up with the ridge. I'll show you on this yeah. one here if you can see it a little bit better. There's the yeah. ridge right there. You just get your slotted driver right in there. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to pivot right off the edge here. Okay, and then sometimes you'll need to go a couple spots. It'll usually pop right out. So I'm going to ask the hard question. How often do I do this? That is a great question, <laughs> and there is no great answer to that. Uh, it's something that you just have to kind of monitor. Um, the best way to monitor when it's time for you to do this is by watching and paying attention to your flow. Keep an eye on what your screen actually looks like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as you can see on a brand new screen, obviously this is an IMS filter. It looks quite different, but it's much more shiny, much more silver. Uh, this one's getting a little old, but if you look at the backside, obviously it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll usually see a lot of like deep caking on here. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll also notice that you'll get channeling when you're pulling your shots. And if you just pull a blank shot of no portafilter in place, you'll start seeing points where the water is not flowing so much. You'll have more water flowing from here and nothing from here. That's a good indication that it's time to do this. Now what about the, the group gasket there, right? Because that one kind of looks like it's ready to be replaced. Yep. This is also a strong indication of when it's time to do this. Um, and if you'll see on this one, you've already got this ridge going along the center here. Right. Um, good way to tell is if you push on it, you're not getting a whole lot of flex in there. Mm -hmm. now, if you take a new gasket and press down on it, you see how there's that little spot? Yeah, and it kind of pops back. And yep. Deflex and okay, and exactly. there's no, no big deep ridge in there. I mean, you're you're gonna have a little ridge when you start using it, right? Uh, yeah, once you once you've been using it for a couple months, you will get a little bit of a ridge in there. Mm -hmm. um, but once it's to this point where it's pretty deep in there, and it's easier to feel than to explain. Sure. This feels like hard plastic at this point instead yeah. of smooth rubber. Okay. Um, so you can definitely just kind of reach your finger in there and touch the edge of the gasket and see how it feels. Idea. I've always been a fan of just doing the, the poke test and seeing if it comes back up. If it comes back up, you still got some good life in you. But if you press down and nothing happens, then that's getting pretty brittle. And obviously, uh, if it's leaking or you're clocking in way too far or something, yeah, Exactly, maybe. yes, yes. If you start clocking in and you're like way out there at like, yeah. you know, five o'clock or so. Yeah. That's it's definitely time. time to start okay. looking at some new pieces here. So, um, but the main reason that I don't like doing this too horribly often is that the more times that you are prying this off, you're going to start causing separation here. You can jab holes in here. 
uh, basically you're going to lessen the life of the shower screen just mm -hmm. by taking it on and off, on and off. Okay. Um, so that, that's my main reason for not doing it too often. As long as you're back flushing properly, you know, mm -hmm. follow whatever works for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, with no right answer to a lot of these questions is how do I back flush? How often do I back flush? And it really depends on your wa water quality. If you're doing a post pull uh, flush of the group head, if you're doing just basic water back flushing frequently, uh, if you've just neglected your machine for you know, six months and you're not doing anything, you're just pulling shot after shot and you're never rinsing it, never back flushing it. Maybe do yourself a favor and do this. Huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. it'd definitely be a good time to maybe every six months do it. But uh, okay. if you take really good care of your machine, I mean, I, I can get maybe a year out of a shower screen on my machine at home. Okay. So it, right. it just really depends on how well you take care of it. But we got some something else to take off here, right? Yep. Uh, again, this is also not on the other video just because of the fact that you have to take these parts off and I just wanted to stress that. Sure. Um, so up here you have your shower plate. Mm -hmm. um, it's a slotted spot. You're going to need a wider slotted driver for this mm -hmm. uh, just because it's got that little notch in the center there. Um, this one's a little loose already. But those but can be pretty tight and they can be stuck. Yeah, yeah. You get a lot of coffee oils and residue in there which will make it kind of tough. Mm -hmm. um, this is where it would be a good idea to put the machine on its side like this because it's going to give you a lot better vantage point. Um, if it's really stuck, you may need to throw your wrench onto your screwdriver and mm -hmm. just give it a hard turn. Just mm -hmm. be careful because it is brass and you will start to chew it up. Yep. As you can see, I may have gone a little ham on this one. So just be careful. Don't do what I apparently did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but other than that, it just unscrews. And then mm -hmm. that you can take and put right into Kafiza. It's a little uh, gooey up under there, huh? Yeah, you get a little, little residue in there, yeah. but usually cleans off fairly easily. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, a little kafiza in there. Um, once you have that cleaned off, make sure you're getting in here cleaned off. This is where, you see that little hole right there is where the water is actually being introduced to the plate. Mm -hmm. uh, so just make sure you don't have any scale buildup or any coffee residue sitting in there. Um, if you do see a lot of buildup in there, um, you're okay to take like a pick or something and kind of just clean it out, ream it out a little bit. But after you do that, before you put all this back together, I would suggest putting the machine back upright and just running, it doesn't have to be hot water, just run some water through just to get it flushed just out. Just to flush out. Just because you don't want to be packing something in there that's now just going to get blasted right into here and sit there right after you cleaned everything. Oh, we can take a brush up in there and yep, exactly. clean and stuff. And so you use the brush to clean in here, clean in there. Uh, key point that you want to hit is inside the ridge where the gr new gasket's going to go. Mm -hmm. If you have buildup in there, that gasket may not fit completely flush. Uh, can make it so that your basket is going to sit a little bit cockeyed or uh -huh. won't even sit in there at all. So mm -hmm. it's a good idea to just make sure you get all inside that ridge as clean as clean can be. Uh, it's okay to use a little bit of Kafiza, some Clean, Urnex spray, whatever you want to use. Uh, get that cleaned up. Yep, just get that as cleaned out as you can. So, and I'm not going to go too ham on this just for the sake of the video, but uh, once you have everything cleaned off, some pro tip here to make this easier the next time you change it mm -hmm. make sure you get these threads really clean mm -hmm. then our trusty friend yeah <laughs> good friend malakot malakot 111 any kind of food safe grease is totally fine to use here if you just put a little bit on your threads there it'll help keep build up from getting into the threads and it'll make it much easier for you to unscrew it the next time you have to do this So, let's tighten that back down. It does not have to be like cranked in there. Okay. So, line it up so I'm not, yeah, just a little bit tight, just so that I'm not loosening it with my finger. That's exactly About, where I want okay. it. Okay. Again, it is brass on brass, so it is easy to strip that stuff. So you never want to crank down too hard okay. on those components. Be gentle. Exactly. 
show us some love. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now we've got that cleaned out. Again. Now oh, that's a real use technician using the fingers. Yeah. There. <laughs> like that. Yep. Gotta do it. Yep. I can tell by feel, and you know, mm -hmm. I could do this with my eyes shut at this point. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put on new shower screen, new gasket. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the gasket, you will see manufacturer's name yep. or some kind of insignia on one side of it, but not on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. That side of it is what's going to go up into oh. the group head. Okay. So you're not going to clock into the ECM. Nope. Let's <laughs> print it on there. Okay. So if you look at your shower screen, you want your shower screen to pop down through that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then another thing, more of no. this, again, can help you the next time you need to change these, is if you put just a little bit of lubricant on the top side and around the edge, you'll need a lot, just a little bit. Not only does it help it slide in easier, but it'll help it slide out easier the next time you go to change it. Okay. Now, best way to do this, to put it back in, is grab with two fingers and line up with where the wings That's, of your porta filter uh, are going to go. And then you're going to rock it in. Oh. Okay, just push. Make sure it's in as far as you can. And then, last thing you want to do is just grab a porta filter mm -hmm. and just lock it into place. Okay. That'll help. Kind of push it down into the groove a little more? Yep. Or, or that'll, that'll get it the rest of the way seated in because you won't always get it to pop in all the way first try. Okay. Um, it's okay that if it's a little stubborn to take your flat head and just kind of push. Mm -hmm around a few times until because you sometimes you'll try to put the porta filter in and it's just not quite there okay. as long as you get it seated in right around where the wings have to go in and start turning then the porta filter twist will get it the rest of the way okay so all right 